Now, this might be uploaded a bit late. We upload like a week late because there's something called college, and if you kid are rules, or you grown ass niggas that watch my videos should know. I don't have a lot of time like I did back in the summer uploading every week. So that might be quite inconsistent, even though it's a lot of time to rec There's a lot of way reasons why you should record. A lot of stuff might be premiering. Video games are going to be up in the fall. Sport, one of the, uh, more of the more popular sports are going to be up and broadcasting live on primetime television, or then some. <clears throat> so, I have a lot of stuff planned that I was thinking about, plus I had my own education that I still want to continue that doesn't have to be involving my YouTube channel, even though it's not much to begin with, but let's, let's, let's just set it straight for what it is. The, the Clash of Champions was... All right. I didn't dislike most of the matches. There was a lot of flaws in most of them. There were some flaws. I'm not going to lie. There is stuff that was absolutely confusing. But when it comes to shove, it was not bad. We had a few big returns, a big appearance by Barry Wyatt, above average wrestling matches. But here's the, ch here's the thing that gets me a bit agitated because not only does the pay per view look the same, feels the same as any Raw or SmackDown. It didn't change anything. The Universal Championship hasn't changed since SummerSlam. And since then, the pace of Raw looked completely the same. Shinsuke Nakamura has been like the third different Intercontinental Champion after Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley kept hopping and uh, title swapping for the last like four, first four months, of the, like five months of the entire calendar year. Baron Corbin is back to being a get-off-my-TV heat-capable wrestler. Even though I don't think he's not that bad and he's been performing well since he returned from injury. I know he wasn't in the pay-per-view, but they kept promoting that the finals was going to be aired on Raw instead of Clash of Champions. But we had Eric Rowan and Roman Reigns have a match. Even though Daniel Bryan was a major part of that little hit idea that they had for the last six weeks on SmackDown. That they're still continuing, by my, by the way. So, we're going to do kickoff. Because actually, there's something important in kickoff. We had Drew Gulak versus H Herberto Corrillo and Lance and Lince Dorado. What got Lince Dorado into a title shot? I don't know, thanks nobody watches 205 Live. You'll be one of the 23 who continues to watch 205 Live, and this wasn't that bad of a match. I think we had a double moonsault. We, of course, had that combined submission. I think it was a face lock into a single leg Boston Crab. Then there was, like, a moonsault from Lindsay Dorada. No, it was a moonsault from Corello over to Lindsay Dorada, like a knee straight to the face moonsault. Then Drew Gulak moved him out the way to pick up the pin to retain the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, here's the thing. And, and uh... Seeing how this match was, it was all right, but it was like one of the more boring ones other than like the mix of like two styles. You know, we had like three, like two luchadors face off against one uh, cruiserweight technician. This wasn't much of my favorite Drew Gulak matches ever since he changed his look from the white collared cruiserweight that used to be like coattailing Ron Enzo Amore when he was cruiserweight champion. So it's a huge change of pace. I like the new look, I like the way he wrestled. Completely amazing. He looked like a different type of performer than I saw, like, at the Cruiserweight Classic. And how he was in the 205 Live roster, but... This is a bit much. Hopefully, 205 Live gets cancelled. But we keep the Cruiserweight division. We find a way to make it feel like a bit of a mid-card. But still, like, its own unique identity. That's something what I think WWE is missing. And what they completely lost the point of back when they brought it back from 2016 after the Cruiserweight Classic was done. So that that's like a rough stint in how we just gave the women the tag team championships when it's just an excuse to bring more women, uh, you know, more camera time, even though they still are relevant at this case. Like the Iconics, the previous women's tag team champions. So not 
all because you have a belt doesn't mean you're going to be the most relevant guy on the roster. We know that. Look at Bailey. Look at Shinsuke Nakamura. Finn Balor wasn't the most relevant champion. He defended it in kickoff, if you don't remember, back in Extreme Rules, like, two months ago. And now Finn Balor's off of his freaking head shaven, looking like a freaking Catholic sex operator, because I don't know what he looks like now. Next up was Cedric Alexander, facing off against AJ Styles, and this is all because he pitted him the go-home show before Clash, uh, Clash of Champions. And they weren't trading wins before. Styles was interviewing, uh, was still like interviewing, like with uh, affairs with Braun, uh, Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins feud. So I thought, oh, that's gonna be a triple threat match or something. No. Not like a winner takes all things. Because AJ Styles is still like the top guy on the Raw brand. So we just gave Cedric Alexander a shot to just get camera time because he fucked up back in the King of the Ring, and it came up to. A Michinoku driver from the start. A fucking Top Gun holo. Hurricane around is off the bat. AJ St uh, and Cedric Alexander was full head of steam until he got pinned and then he took a uh, phenomenal forearm clash to the fucking face. And it's one, two, three. Yeah, that's it. It came on the end when uh, Anderson and Gallows were attacking uh, Cedric. Immediately after the match with Styles, you're starting to pummel on him. Next up was, of course, we were kicking off the show after AJ Styles somehow kicked off. It wasn't kickoff. This was his first time ever being in kickoff, by the way. So, any of you fans still upset because you didn't see AJ Styles on the net on on the pay per view, the full on pay per view, we're not kind of kickoff. I'm sorry. Next up was supposed to be the opening match, and of course they would do this so they can try to sell that Braun Strowman and Rollins are feuding. Braun Strowman and Rollins are feuding. And from the start of the year, after Braun Strowman accidentally, like, purposely, purposely, we, we gotta be serious here, purposely broke the door, the limo door of Vince, he was stripped of a Universal Championship opportunity, got eliminated, the last person eliminated in the Royal Rumble, at the same pay-per-view he was supposed to face up against Brock Lesnar, been irrelevant for about four months till finally getting his head out of his ass. Comes out facing Rollins, wins the tag team titles, because somehow that's more tag team gold than he ever had singles gold in the entire roster. And then we only have him get one match against somebody for the Universal title. I think they fucked him up back in 2018. And then you have him open the show and then main event it? Just for another Night of Champions like pay per view? Making Rollins go double duty? It was alright though. It was it was an alright batch, I, I gotta say. It was it, of course shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, trying to sell to get the hot tag. Rollins crawling as slow as he can, even though he only took like three minutes of getting beaten up. I thought the slow as you can go if like if the guy beat the shit out of you for at least several minutes. Ziggler and Ro Rude did do their dirtiness to just beat the shit out of him. But that wasn't, like, worth a hot tag, and the fans weren't into this. It came up with a glorious DDT after Braun Strowman, I think, uh, got a bit pissed off on Rollins and then was stopped by Ziggler. Glorious DDT on Rollins. <laughs> we got the first uh, title change of the night, and most of them were tag team title changes. It's a scary factor when I don't think a singles belt ever changed hands. And let's go over this. We're gonna count with one hand how many times the cruiser uh, any champion singles belts changed hands. Did not change hands. So Drew Gulak in the triple threat match for the cruiserweight title retained. AJ Styles faces off against Cedric Alexander on kickoff retained. Next up, Bailey versus Charlotte Flair via bottom turnbuckle. And she ran like a little bitch in the, minute, in the end of the match. Retained. Next up was, uh, goddamn, Shinsuke Nakamura versus The Miz. Retained. Sasha Banks versus uh, Becky Lynch. It was just an outside brawler to begin with. It wasn't that impressive. 
she, they kept taking this outside, and somehow the most painful thing is hitting somebody with mustard. And then taking this back inside the ring, and then ba- and then sh- and of course looking like such a baby face, Becky Lynch retains via disqualification. And then the and then the second to last championship match before the main event was Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton, and what looked like a pretty good match to begin with. Still selling no storylines. They're doing a predictable finish. Thanks, we know that that move is banned. Retained. Kofi Kingston with Trouble in Paradise out of nowhere. We obviously knew that was coming. Then we had the main event that was Rollins versus uh, Seth, uh, the, uh, versus Braun Strowman. Retained after... We know how limited Braun Strowman is in the ring. The best thing that made him impressive is his no Q matches, the way we give him freedom to go wherever he wants around the outside the ring so he can just show his strength. But we know in a full-on wrestling match, watching Braun Strowman is boring as hell. And I don't want to say this anymore because I was a fan of Braun Strowman when he feuded with Roman Reigns. I really thought they were actually going to get a brutal-ass-kicking monster back on the main roster. That's interesting. Has a phrase that's over. Completely scary-looking. And you know, if a woman fucked Braun Strowman, it would be death by dick right now. It's really that simple. And then Rollins just wins off a few curb stomps, and then a pedigree, then another curb stomp. It took four four curb stomps and a pedigree to get rid of Braun Strowman, and Braun Strowman failed to attempt even one power slam. That was an understood main event. For somebody, for people that have been waiting for Braun Strowman to actually get a title shot, Bobby Lashley will get a title shot. Bobby Roode to get a title shot. Samoa Joe to get a title shot. Shinsuke Nakamura hasn't been in the world title picture since last year. And he was the Royal Rumble winner. And he's been barely a main event factor since he was feuding with AJ Styles. So that's a sad thing to hear. Next up, there was of course other matches. And I quickly just summed it up because I obviously have more stuff to do. There's, of course, still the New Day that had a, a Charlotte and ba- Bailey that had an irrelevant match. It was really boring. It was truly boring. And, said, and, and Charlotte started off the bat the first 10 minutes, immediately charging with a big boot, coming with all these moves until I think uh, Bailey started targeting the leg, and then she used the bottom turnbuckle, unleashed it, and threw something out of like the notebook of Ric Flair. They kept su- sucking the dick of Ric Flair. And ended up with Bailey winning. An ironic factor, thanks Bailey's the heel, using an underhanded tactic instead of her showing more aggression. And I think that that should be her tactic, other than, oh, thanks I'm heel. I should always cheat instead of actually show my more aggressive part of myself, like that never happens before. This is another pay per view that Drew McIntyre isn't in, by the way. I haven't seen Drew McIntyre in a month. Next up was a brilliant match against the Revival facing off against the New Day. I enjoyed it. Great selling of the knee by Cedric Alexander. I mean, I know, Xavier Woods. Sorry. Good, a good spear by... Uh, no, it was a great, like, that... I think it was a brain buster off the turnbuckle that I marked out for. I mean, no, from the ring apron. A good hot tag straight from Xavier Woods. It was so heelish how they just they hit they hit the shatter machine on Xavier Woods, step the pinfall so they can just hit a leg submission because uh, Xavier was selling the knee and not because they broke the knee like the last time the new day were on Raw, like three weeks ago. So that was pretty impressive. That was a good win. Uh, this was the bat- match of the night to me. <laughs> We had Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross face off against Fire and Desire in a pretty good tag team match. I liked it. Good, really decent moves. And I think this is because Fire and Desire pinned them on SmackDown that they got a championship opportunity. It was a it was like a ripoff of total elimination. It was a leg sweep from uh Sonya Deville into a bicycle knee straight from Amanda Rose. And every move felt like it had a purpose. Every move felt like it, it just the 
problem with this pay-per-view, none of this changed the big thing. Rollins is just going to face another baddie. The women's tag division has never had a good storyline or at least an interesting feud. The Cruiserweight Championship never peaked at all. It still doesn't even have, like, the most captivating champion since Enzo. Fucking Enzo. The Intercontinental Championship hasn't been good since Miz held it, sadly. Somehow Miz was the last good Intercontinental Champion, sad to say. When he was a heel, when he actually had a pretty good gimmick, that means he deserves a heel role. And he actually had a good valet and his own fucking wife. And now that bitch is pregnant. Congrats, by the way. Fucking... The universe... Uh, fucking... Kofi Kingston is still going to feel like the ultimate underdog when no one really cares about his irrelevant title reign, having in the arsenal that he had since 2014, and having still this charisma as he was back in 2008. Smiling, showing only aggression when somebody provokes him a tiny bit, and then show how irrelevant you are as a champion. Ron Simmons is a better world champion than you, and that nigga been literally called a nigga in public. R.I.P. Harley Race. That's... That's how it is to watch Clash of Champions. There's some really good wrestling, but not that much storytelling. Other than Eric Rowan coming up and attacking Roman Reigns in their decent Falls County War match, I don't think it was better than their in-stage brawl that they had that he literally threw a fan. They still used that, that camera... The camera side thing and still utilized it, but this time Roman Reigns used it. And it came up with Luke Harper returning and beating the shit out of Roman Reigns for the victory, using the armor iron claw into a choke slam. Pretty decent false candy were match. I liked it. But other than that, I think it was a good surprise, but I feel like they're gonna fuck up fuck it up and just try to make a rip-off faction for Bray Wyatt. Thanks not only is is like Air, Luke Harper back, Bray Wyatt was also in the pay-per-view. Attacking Seth Rollins after he defeated Bra uh, Braun Strowman, and Jesus Christ, this was so underwhelming. And then the next week on the next night on Raw, he just issued that he's just going to be facing Bray Wyatt in a Hell in a Cell match. When you still have like four, like three weeks remaining, or no, like four weeks remaining before Hell in a Cell in October six. So what's the point of selling something like that? I know Rollins is the babyface. He's supposed to face off against all challengers. And all because he attacked him last week when he wasn't even interfering in the match. Was, this was totally after after he even finished. Rollins had no interference at all in this entire match. Yossi didn't come to interfere. Bray Wyatt didn't come to interfere in the match. All because he hit him with the Sister Abigail and then the Mandible Claw. He's just issued a championship opportunity. At least The Rock at least waits until somebody actually does a certain action to actually earn his actual goddamn importance or at least interest The Rock enough so he can get a title shot. This was just ridiculous, and this is just the boost pay-per-view buys all because of how hot Bray Wyatt's is in his Fiend gimmick, as people were back in 2014, when he was supposed to be the next big thing, until John Cena fucked it up, and then he kept losing on pay-per-view the next year, he kept losing on pay-per-views the next year, and then he became world champion the next year, and then becomes strictly irrelevant after losing to fucking Jason Jordan and Kevin Owens. And now we bring him back again, getting another title shot, against what's supposed to be the next top guy in the business that we know he might lose. Or when, how they really are trying to oversell his gimmick. Then, the main... Then, then there was a... Of course, Kofi Kingston, Randy Warren match, and I did not like it. There's some decent... I look, I like that, like, that kept me off guard. Like, he kept dragging around. I thought he's gonna go to a punch. And an RKO out of nowhere. A good reversal for an elevated DDT. Kofi Kingston still can't sell to the fact that he might be actually with a perennial threat like Randy Orton. Because Randy Orton legit has more championship matches, like world championship matches than Kofi will ever have in his career. All the way marking from 2004. Randy Orton has been a world champion since 2004. The most I've never seen Randy with a world title 
was 2012. That's eight years. He has never that that he's held championships. He held them in 2004. He I don't think he won one in 2005. He didn't win the world title in 2005. He didn't win the world title in 2006. He won the world title again in 2007, but it was WWE Championship. 2008, he held it for that long, like from New Mercy 2007 to the to Backlash 2009. I mean 2008. Then he held it again when he kept hopitating the belt with Batista, then Triple H, then holding it for the rest, and then hopitating it with John Cena. He held it again 2010. He held the World Heavyweight Title 2011. Never held a world title again in 2012. It took him SummerSlam 2013 to win back the WWE Championship. Beat John Cena for the world title back at TLC. Held, held it until, like, WrestleMania 30, 2014. 2017, he held the world title. So, like, we know Randy Orton. We could have just sold, like, the ultimate underdog... Feud and they just undersold it. Clash of Champions gets a five out of ten. This was a watchable pay per view. I like the way how they uh, sold some of the matches. Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper coming to the show was pretty good. The matches should have been like more elevated or at least had more higher stakes other than just a title change. So uh, that was my reviews. I'm sorry, these got to be a bit rushed. Because I'm a really off schedule, and hopefully, I'm back into, you know, my my normal self. Because I'm tired. My classes like end like seven o'clock like late yesterday, so I'm I'm not trying to do this <laughs> the best of my ability right now. So, yeah, thanks for watching.